Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, post-mortem of my Blitz game number 693. Um, White kicked off with f4, uh, birds opening, and I went with d5, the um, reverse Dutch, which is the main way to play against it. I just wanted to point out that you can also play the from gambit here, which is uh, kind of interesting, and I often play this way in Blitz. Uh, there's um, two choices for White here. White can actually play e4, and then we've transposed into a uh, king's gambit position so so you have to if you're playing the from gambit you have to also be willing to play against the king's gambit um, the main way that it um, that it stays in unique lines is if um, white takes the pawn and then the idea of the from gambit is to play d6 turn it into a real gambit give up that pawn and so now you're a pawn down but you have open lines and quick development and in fact there's an immediate uh, mate threat uh, queen here check followed by g3 and bishop takes g3 check leads to mate so uh, knight f3 is practically forced although i guess um, g3 is playable in that position too and uh, well it continues from here there's this crazy line with g5 where you try to chase that knight away but probably um, best for black is to play knight f6 and uh, looking at it just recently with the chess engine it seems like um, black is okay but um, Anyway, it's uh, not not necessarily winning for black off the bat, and it leads to uh, there are some lines in here that lead to a lot of simplification. So, um, if white knows what he's doing, that the from gambit is not something to be too much afraid of. So, in uh, slow games, and occasionally in blitz, I'll play with uh, d5. This is sort of my main way of playing in over the board tournaments, and uh, this is a um, Dutch reversed, but in fact it. Um, I'm not sure why exactly, but it seems like black uh, just equalizes right off the bat. And uh, you get a long game, so white certainly has chances to win, but uh, you're basically starting from an equal position. I guess because uh, black has more of a stake of the center, so that's enough to compensate for the loss of the uh, first move. Uh, anyway, um, white goes with uh, knight f3 here normally, but um, or e3 setting up a typical kind of Dutch structure here. My opponent went with a very rare move, d3. And so we're just out of the opening book at this point after I play c5. Knight f6, certainly a viable alternative here. You don't want to develop the this knight. You want to avoid developing the c knight until you've decided what you're doing with this pawn. So I just put it up here right away so I'll be able to play knight c6 at any point. And we are just out of the opening book. And then um, the game might continue, say, e4 e6, uh, bishop e2. This would be like a normal development from that point. And we get that typical kind of complicated position where, as I said, uh, black is about equal. But uh, my opponent went with bishop e3, and so this is a very peculiar development. And, um, and it's not uh, good, actually. Black is better uh, in this position. It's kind of, it's going to take uh, that bishop a couple moves. So it's just a slow development. Sometimes you can get away with these slow developments because it's a closed position, but, uh, well, I, I still have a persistent advantage for quite a while in this game. Let's see, I go e6, he drops his bishop back to f2, that's his idea, I get my knight out to a good square, he goes h3, I go h5. The chess engine criticizes this h5 move, although it does have some points, it's preparing the uh, f4 square for my knight. Um, <clears throat> let's see. But it thinks that I could best keep the advantage by playing like this. And this is a very logical play, so I wanted to show this. Just bishop d6, hitting this pawn, he defends it. And queen b6, hitting this pawn, he defends it. You know, and I've gotten two quick moves of development in, and, uh, you know, I have a substantial lead in this position. Um, so h5, not the, not the best idea, but still leaving, leading to interesting play. And I mean, it's not like um, black is worse either, so it's still... Um, even game. Let's see. I go knight to e7, heading for that f4 square. He goes c3. And um, right here, the chess engine wants me to um, grab more space with that uh, pawn push to d4, which I can get away with, I guess. I have another knight coming into f5 to support the pawn on d4, and I've already got a knight and a queen looking at it. So, yeah, interesting play. I went here right away. And uh, now the reason why this is a mistake is that he could have kicked it with uh, e4. And after the exchange, um, that knight really has to move again. Let's see, I can trade queens first and uh, take away his castling rights. But um, 
Yeah, this position is just not very inspiring for black, and in fact, the tables have turned, and uh, white's a little better. My bishops are kind of hemmed in in this position, particularly the slight squared bishop, whereas his bishops have open lines. So, so that uh, uh, knight f5 move was a mistake, and then uh, white made a mistake, not taking advantage of it, but just playing uh, quietly with uh, e3. But he's, uh, you know, intent on keeping the position closed. So a pair of blunders, and we're left with uh, an advantage to black. So I keep the advantage, or it's in the range of even to an advantage for black in the next uh, group of moves. So let's let's just go ahead. He goes queen c2. I go bishop b7. He goes rook g1. Go g6. He goes knight knight bd2, and I go bishop g7. And uh, this was my last chance to play h4. And h4 is a move that the chess engine thinks gives me an advantage. And um, after this, after I play bishop g7, he gets on this g4 move. So the idea with h4 is to just uh, stop him from playing uh, pawn to g5. Or if he does play it, I can take. And then that really cements my knight on this square unless he wants to uh, push his uh, e-pawn forward and open up the center. So, um, and I could have played that h4 move in any of these preceding places. For example, instead of bishop b7 or instead of g6, could have gone for h4 in any of those places. And that would have uh, kind of kept kept that advantage for, um, for black. After this bishop g7 move, uh, white finally plays g4. And uh, this chases my knight away opens up a line on the king side here. And uh, and now white is even to slightly better. He's starting to accumulate some advantages here. Uh, he castles on the queen side. His king is now a little bit safer than mine. I'm not sure if I want to castle on the uh, on the king side here or not with that open h file. So um, so white's uh, succeeded here in kind of uh, muddying the waters and, and uh, turning the tables a bit on me. OK, so he castled. I went uh, rook to c8. Uh, Queen to e7 maybe is a little better, but uh, well, let's see. I'm not going to go over every nuance here. He moves his king to safety, and uh, I finally get in d4, which is okay here. He takes, I take, and then he pushes on with uh, c4. He doesn't want, I was trying to open up lines towards his king, and he doesn't want that, so he closes that off. That's a good decision from white. Um, let's see, I went queen d7 here. He went a3. That yeah, keeps my knight from hopping into the b4 square, but... You know, it allows this idea of coming to a5 and b3. So so this has pros and cons, this a3 move here. I drop my bishop back to uh, a8. Um, let's see, I want this bishop to be protected by the rook, and uh, I may want to use this uh, b7 square to maneuver my knights. It would be nice to get a knight to um, c5, for example. Um, Let's see, he went knight b3, and I went knight to, knight to b7, starting this maneuver. He goes uh, f5, and I went with the b knight to a5. So I had some ideas here. There's this um, discovered attack on his knight, and um, you know I'm thinking of, uh, and, and also if there's a trade here, I can get a, a tempo, an attack on his queen with tempo. So I'm trying to set up this uh, tactic along the long diagonal. And um, and he lets me do it, so I actually get away with this tactic. He could have played um, f takes e6 here, and after that, he could take my knight and then get uh, bishop g2 in. And this is uh, the kind of position that's similar to what happens in the game, and this uh, keeps that advantage to white. White's white's just better here, um, not a whole lot, but his king is a little bit safer, and. Um, and uh, that's that's going to make the difference. <clears throat> that's that's the balance of the edge. I should probably still be able to hold this. I mean, this is a crazy, uh, complicated position with the with my open king. But uh, I, I guess in a way, uh, from a human perspective, uh, there's more chances for white because it's more difficult to defend an open king position like this. But the chess engine only gives white a slight edge here. Um, F takes g6 is actually a mistake, and. Um, it all gives me a chance to spring my tactic. I took back immediately because I didn't like him taking on uh, f7 with check. But um, if I had played uh, knight takes b3 here, he takes back knight a5, 
queen c2, I just I just win this uh, piece. And, uh, you know, he can uh, complicate things by taking this, but... Um, and th there were some other ways to play it where, where um, you know, the black can throw in some intermediate moves. White can throw in some intermediate moves, but the bottom line is that I come out materially a ahead if I just go immediately for the tactic. Instead, I, um, let's see, he took on g6 and I took back. And, uh, well, we get that kind of position I just looked at where uh, white's a little better. If he, uh, if he takes on a5, he really needs to either take my knight off or play knight bd2 and uh, then everything is fine and white's just that little bit better. He plays rook e1 and notice we're in a section of the game by the way where every other move is a uh, blunder and uh, this is uh, one of those kinds of positions where really only a chess engine <laughs> can play it accurately. There's just uh, too much going on for people to figure out especially in a blitz game. So uh, so I can't really uh, criticize myself or my opponent for all these blunders. Basically, we just played a crazily complicated game and we're doing the best we can. So uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's entertaining. There's all this back and forth. Anyway, so Ricky won is a blunder. And now uh, I am winning and I spot the tactical idea because I'd been trying to set it up for a while. I take the knight, it takes back, and I play knight a5. Uh, hitting the queen. Uh, it turns out, though, <clears throat> once again, uh, I won't call knight a5 a blunder because it still leaves me with some edge. But if I were to just castle here instead of playing knight a5 and go after the knight with my uh, rook, this is actually uh, winning a piece and he can't really do anything about it. Um, say he plays queen back to d1 to defend, then I bring my queen over here. And the problem is that um, that there's a loose uh, bishop behind the knight, so we can't just move the knight away, and uh, and he can keep defending, but I can keep harassing the defending pieces, and uh, and it just turns out I win a piece on that line. So that would be uh, the accurate way for me to win the game. So after knight a5, uh, he can wiggle and squirm. I thought I was winning a piece here, but uh, he manages to uh, defend everything. I castle now. You know, kind of funny castling so late in the game, but it connects the rook. It brings this rook into play with a threat. I thought I was still winning a piece here, but actually bishop g2 defends. But, uh, well, he blunders. He plays <laughs> rook to g3. And now I blunder with rook f7. Let's see, what's what's the move that I can play here? Ah, yeah, well, it was hard to see, I have to say. But the, uh, the best, uh, first of all, just e5 here uh, keeps an advantage for black and just kind of uh, leaving white tied up. I'm not winning material. But even stronger is b5 starting to uh, uh, undermine his uh, king side a little bit. And that was that was one of the things I never got going in the game is I never got counterplay against his king. And this would be a good time to start it. You know, I've, I've used the attack on his knight um, to um, kind of move his pieces around so they're a bit awkwardly placed. And now I switch my attention over here to the king side and uh, that's a way to get uh, to get the most out of my position. Let's see. The chess engine recommends bishop e2, adding another defender to the knight. And then after this exchange, um, playing e5. And, well, I've got this uh, solid pawn mass in the center. I've got some pressure against the, uh, the c pawn as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like these pawns rolling through are going to be very dangerous. So it, it thinks black is just winning there. Okay, so anyway, I was focused on trying to uh, scoop up that loose piece there, the knight. I played rook f7, um, but he can defend this. Let's see, he goes queen e2. I go rook c f8, and he goes knight to e5, which is actually a blunder once again. So it was about even in this section. Here, though, um, this... Uh, loses a piece, right? I take the uh, knight off and uh, and then I grab the bishop. So I will count that as a real blunder because he could have foreseen that. That's just a simple exchange and uh, dragging the queen away from the defense of this piece. So now I'm a piece up. <laughs> finally, my, my tactical uh, uh, threats have finally paid off. I made a threat that he didn't defend against. <clears throat> um, and I should go on to win this game, but well, you have to admit my king position is still a bit loose. You know, if he could get a rook over here, um, that there's some mating threats and uh, various ideas. So I have to be careful. 
but uh, but I, I am winning here. Let's see. So he goes rick h3, immediately targeting my king side. And I go queen g7, defending. Yeah, that's a good move. He takes on e6. It did give up the pawn. So now we have to think about what's the best way to defend. I'm, I'm a piece up. I just need to defend against this attack, and, uh, and I'll be okay. And the best defensive move here is queen f7. And uh, you can see why. If I can force a trade of queens, he won't have enough force really to mate me here. So that would be uh, the way to play it. Or if, they force, if I force the queen back, you know, then uh, I'm controlling enough squares. It makes it difficult for him to, uh, to organize his attack. So either way, um, I should win that game. I went rook 2 to f7, brought the rook back blocked the check and I know I was trying to defend over here but the, the rook is pinned. I'm still winning here by the way so I'm still like a minus two score or evaluation by the chess engine so I haven't lost yet but uh, not playing the most accurate defense. Let's see. He goes bishop e2. I go bishop c6. Once again not the most accurate move and now my my advantage is diminishing to only a slight advantage. So the way to play this here is leave the bishop there where it's well defended and on a good diagonal um, and bring the knight in. Use the knight to chase the queen away. Say he plays a g5 here to try and take more squares away from my king. The knight can come into c5, chase the queen off of this diagonal. That's what I was trying to do. Is what, That's what I wanted to do was chase the queen off that diagonal. I didn't, didn't see this knight maneuver. But now the queen has to unpin. The queen comes over here to g4 and I can put a rook on the e-file and I'm able to unwind in time. So that's um, that's the uh, the best play once again, and still winning. Bishop c6, still an edge for uh, for uh, um, still an edge for Black. But if uh, White finds the move, Bishop f3 here, this actually uh, is uh, pretty good for White. White, well, it's about even. <laughs> the chess engine says. <laughs> the thing is. Uh, I can't really uh, take that. Um, well, it's defended by his, his rook. I could trade it off, but uh, this, this bishop is an important uh, defensive piece uh, for a reason that'll become clear later. I don't want to give the answer away just yet. So bishop f3 was the move. Uh, b4, once again, is losing, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm winning. So let's see. I get in rook e8, chasing his queen off the diagonal. Queen uh, goes over to d6. And let's see, I play rook f6, chasing the queen again. The queen goes all the way to h2, although it is looking a little dangerous on this diagonal. I can't, um, you know, I can't move my king away because he has a uh, rook here with the pin winning my queen for the rook. So, you know, I am a little bit tied up here. Um, let's see, I tried the move knight to b7, which is still good. And, uh, he played the move b5. And uh, right here, my next move loses the game. So this is your... Uh, but there is one move here. All, all moves lose except for one, which wins. <laughs> so, so there's one and only one move here for black. And uh, if you want to uh, study this position for a little bit, why don't you see if you can find the, uh, the winning move for black. Okay, uh, pause the video if you want time to think about it. It's a very interesting, complicated position, so, uh, you know, take your time <laughs> thinking about it. Uh, I'm giving the answer away now. The only move here for black to stay in the game and uh, to avoid losing and also to, to stay with a winning advantage is this move, bishop f3. Um, so one point, which I didn't appreciate during the game, is the bishop is controlling the uh, h1 square, which prevents him from tripling. So there's no immediate threat of rook to um, rook to h8 because I can just trade it off. But once he triples, then that's a very dangerous threat. So I really need this bishop here and uh, to stay on this diagonal. That, that's the reason why this is such a critical moment. And because if I don't, that's the only place I can go to on this diagonal and keep control of that h1 square. And now I'm threatening just to uh, win some material here and he can't take the bishop right his uh his bishop is pinned and uh you can try taking this way but i can just keep keep taking and uh you know as long as i get one pair of rooks off then i am fine here 
Plus this goes with check, so he has to move the king and then I can save the knight. I, I'm a whole rook up in that line. So um, bishop f3 can't do much. If he tries pushing the pawn forward, I can just play rook to f4 and uh, sit on this position. He, he really can't um, really can't do anything here. <laughs> so, so that's how I keep a winning position. Uh, all other moves lose, including uh, this one, because I've given up that key uh, h1 square. And so white's just winning from here on out, and he does a good job here. Although, you know, it's not too hard to see this tripling is a really dangerous threat. Uh, you know, I try to wiggle and squirm some, but basically I have to, uh, I have to give up the queen for a, um, a rook at the end. And um, he finally traded it off there. Um, let's keep on going. And then uh, he mates me in a very nice way here. Let's see how he sets it up. He checks me with his queen and uh, and then here when I let go of the second rank his rook comes in. Um, after a couple of checks he brings his rook in to the second rank and then when I try to bring my rook into contest he can uh, maneuver with his queen with a series of checks. It's a pretty nice technique here. Um, he drives my king to the corner and then mates me. So excellent uh, play by uh, White there finishing up the game. You know, it was kind of a crazy complicated uh, section in the middle where neither of us could play <laughs> anywhere close to the best moves. But um, anyway, a fun game. Hope you guys like this. Leave any comments you have in the section below and I, would, uh, I will see you again later. Bye.